Okay, so today is the big day that I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for this since I actually started this build. Um, my parts came in. And no, it's not the fairing and all that. But my valve springs came in. The spring retainers came in. And the valve cover bolts came in. Which, that's not a big deal right now. Those will come into play later on. But, I did get them through Ape Racing. Yes, it is Ape Racing. I accidentally stumbled upon it after I put up the video. And yes, it is Ape Racing. So anyways, uh, my wife was right. These are the Pro Series springs for the Jixxers. And then the Titanium Retainers. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get going on this. Uh, I'm only going to show one valve because I have a lot of work to do and uh, there's going to be a lot that goes into this video because I'm gonna, the goal of it is, is to get the cylinder head and everything done on it tonight. So let's see, let's hope for the best. Um, like I said, I'll show one valve on how to put the keepers in and everything. I may actually show two, but depending on how long it's going to take me to do it. Um, I do believe that these valve springs are titanium valve springs and uh, yeah, it should work real good. So let's get started. Okay, so now I got all the spring and retainers in except for one. All the keepers are in. If you ever done this before, you already know this is a big pain in the ass. So I'll show you the process that I've done to put these in. Alright, first thing I'm doing is I'm grabbing the valve right here and then let me get the assembly glue. I'm putting just very little assembly lube on here because you don't want it to start dry. And you need very little. Rub it on like that. And then put your valve in. Should stay up like that because you got the assembly lube on it. Okay, sorry, it had some plastic or something on it. It was the only one that had that. Put your spray in, put your retainer in. Take your tool again, make sure you're on the center of the valve, on the valve side. That goes on the retainer. Now, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you are centered on that valve, like that and just start cranking it down. Now, when you do this, it is gonna play a big role on how far you go down or how far you don't go down. You can end up biting it because it won't go in or uh, it'll drop down too far. I can't quite remember exactly where I need it. It will be offset because that spring in there so now I'm going to grab my retainers, or not my retainers, my keepers. And I'm just using my magnet to grab them. Yeah, I'm going to clean them up. Get all the oil and everything off of them. And these are very easy to lose. I actually dropped one. And I about shit myself, but luckily it landed on the magnet and it stuck to the magnet. Okay, now I'm sure there's an easier way on how to do this, but this, I guess I choose to do everything the hard way. What I'm doing is putting in my pointer finger, getting my pointer finger in through here because I don't have no room at all. Kind of move that spring around. Of course, this one's probably going to fight me. 
It's good to have your magnet around. Yeah, it's gonna fight me. Oh, sorry, I should probably show you. There is a lip. That lip goes up. Because that goes into the groove of the valve. Okay. Well, this one is in sitting pretty much exactly where I need it to. See it right there? This back side right there? That's half of it. I still got another half I gotta put in. Usually the first half I was finding was going in easier. The second half I've been having a lot of issues with. Well, not a lot. There's a few that went in pretty easy. Now you're just going to go on the opposite side of it. Put it in like that. That one actually went in. So, now we have to release pressure on it. Which is kind of sitting a little funky. And you see it popped in right there now go easy go slow because these keepers will pop out and they will shoot across the room I take it and I kind of wiggle it a little bit make sure it's seating in there right and you'll hear a little pop and that's when it's seated now let me turn this out all the way I just didn't want to film me doing that uh, 16 times because it's really it's nothing great to watch all you need to do is see one and there it is it's seated in there it's actually seated in there pretty nicely and there's the rest of them So now what I'm going to do is I'm ready to go ahead and put the cylinder head on because that was the last one. So the uh, valves are all in. Now it's cylinder head time. Okay, last night I went ahead and put the head gasket on it and that was a pain in the ass to do uh, because of these head studs. It was a huge pain in the ass. So, what I may recommend is if you're going to do the head gasket and the studs at the same time, go ahead and put the head gasket on and then put the studs in. But, I know if you have to put another head gasket on or go into here again, uh, you're going to have to pull the head gasket up. So, it's up to you. It was just a pain in the ass because it would get caught here and it would go down here and then I'd get this go up and it would go down here and get caught over here. It was just playing games. Um, that would be probably the biggest part of doing the uh, the uh, head studs. That's probably the worst part. But since we're here now and we're ready, we're going to go ahead and pull all of these nuts off. Because I just had them sitting there. They kind of just, that way I knew where they were at. And we dropped one in the cylinder.
So I'm going to go ahead and set up here and then I will come back when I'm good and ready. Actually, you know, what I'm going to go ahead and do is one last time. I did this last night already, but I'm going to do it one last time. I'm going to wipe the cylinder out, wipe the piston off, and I, like I said, I've already done the other one. So this is ready to go on, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, since we're ready, what I'm going to go ahead and do is turn this cylinder head upside down, like this, and I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off and make sure I have any oil or metal or anything that's on this was on the cylinder head is off of it. Uh, I've already did car cleaner twice through the cylinder head. I had to do it another time because of the, uh, the cams. So, this is ready. The block is ready. And we will get going on that. Alright, I'm sorry if the lighting is bad. I only have one light in here. I just realized I had one more nut on there. Don't forget to pull out these over here. These little screws. And I'm going to tell you, I've already put the head on once. I think I told you guys that in the last video. This is a tight, tight, tight bench. It is a pain to get it on. But, we will get it on. So, head gaskets on. Surfaces are clean. Everything's good to go. Ready to throw the cylinder head on. This is something I've been waiting for for like a month and a half to do all of this so I'm excited to do it so the well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my timing chain I'm going to drop it in right there now you might be asking me why am I doing that and I'll show you uh, I need to find my screwdriver this one then I'm going to take the cylinder head Turn it around, and we're going to just get it kind of close. Kind of set it on there. What I'm going to do is take my magnet, grab that timing chain. This probably works a lot better if you have two people. There we go. Just like that. So now the timing chain is completely out of the way and your adjuster over here, you can move it around. So now the thing that's going to hold you up the absolute most is this adjuster right here. So you need to kind of squeeze it that just let it slide down oh, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be not going to lie I uh, didn't think it was going to go on that easy so leave the timing chain right there don't mess with it I'm going to try to get this to go down a little bit further onto the guide pins because it's really not that down that far especially on this end There's one. Okay, they're on. Now, this is the part that is going to be the most crucial. Um, I'm going by the APE, or sorry, sorry, the Ape Racing, uh, their, their torque specs. Now, if you go by the uh, manufacturer, the Suzuki manufacturer torque specs, I believe it's like it's like 21 foot pounds I believe and then you go 60 degrees after you do the or you do the first 21 torque 
and then you, on the second pull, you go 60 degrees. You don't do that on these head studs. On these head studs, it's going to be 42 foot pounds. Uh, that's the max. It's like 30, 38 to 42 foot pounds. I'm going to go 42, but we're going to do this in two stages. We're going to go 50% pull, then we're going to go 100% pull. Also, when you do this, you have to put lube on the studs, which I don't even know where my assembly lube is. You have to put lube on the studs. There it is. It's right underneath you guys. You have to put lube on the studs, and you have to put lube on the bottom part right here on the nut. That will give you the proper torque. Which I forgot to say that when I put the head studs in, I did lubricate it when I did it. So what I'm going to do is get some assembly lube on my finger. I'm just going to put it on the nut, or on the bolt, stud, and said this is going to give you the proper torquing, which I had an argument with one of my co-workers now, because my job I used to do, I had worked in the wind power industry, and they were really big on lubricating and torquing and if you do it dry you won't get the proper torquing that the manufacturer specifies now that's a whole different subject and if, if you guys want to get into more of that or want me to go into more of the dry and wet torquing let me know and we can do a separate video on that but yeah, me and this co-worker got into it about, he says, wet over torques, dry is the way to go. The uh, point of the moral of the story is, that still hasn't been settled yet. Okay, so now we have assembly lube on that. Now what I'm going to do is go on every single one of these nuts, the washer side, and I'm just going to smear it on there. And I'll show you here in a minute what that looks like. Just take it, assembly lube, put it on there, even go ahead and put it on the thread part. Don't be shy with it. Because this is only torquing your cylinder head to a block. So I get, I mean, treat it however you want, but that's a pretty crucial part to me. Just gonna wipe off my hands. And we're gonna start putting these nuts on the stuff. I believe they are nine sixteenths. They sure are. Okay, so I gotta go grab a different socket so I can get this one. So I'm gonna go grab that. I'll run this down and then uh, we'll get to the torquing. Alright, I had to grab a thin a deep socket so I can do it from the top and not don't use an extension because that'll take away from the torquing. You want to use a deep socket. Uh, just kind of a note, these over here are extremely tight to get the socket in. 
So it's kind of a pain in the ass to do. So the first pass, we're going to go ahead and go 21 foot pounds. Set my torque wrench. 15. 21. Okay. Now I tried to find the torque spec or the torque pattern on these. I can't find it anywhere. I even looked at the owner's manual. So I'm going to go with, I was talking to my brother, and it was how I was telling him, but he told me to crisscross, so I'm going to go the crisscross route. So we're going to start with intake side. We're going to go intake is going to be number one. Dead center. Once you hear it click, stop. straight across. We're going to come back over here to three. And I'm sitting behind the motor as if you were on the bike. Dead center. One. Two. Exhaust side. Back to the left side. Three. Right next to it. That's number three. Okay. We're going to jump over to the exhaust side right next to the center one, that one's going to be four. Okay, we're going to jump over here, straight across. Five. We're going to jump over to the other side. Other side of the exhaust. Sorry. Six. Now we're going to jump back over here to the corner, intake side. Seven. Move my timing chain out of the way. We're going to jump over here, exhaust side corner. Eight, cross, nine, jump back over, and this is going to be number ten. Okay, was that twenty-one foot-pounds. Now, I'm going to turn it up to forty-two. Two foot pounds. Okay, we're going to start the exact same spot. We're not doing anything crazy, we're just going to 42 foot pounds. One, cross. You're going to have to kind of hold the motor when you do it. It's two. Four. Five. Six. Move the cam chain out of the way. Seven. Right angle. 
nine. Now I'm going to come back right here to the first one, double check it, and that's right, that's right, good, 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 good. Good. I had to double check that one. Good. Good. One more. Good. Now, the cylinder head is torqued down. Now, I just want to show you what I was talking about. Motor side right here. I went one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's how I torqued it. There might be a different way how to do it, but that evens the pressure out. So now the cylinder head is on. So now we're ready to go ahead and put the cans in and uh, actually put the buckets on, shims in, cans in. But, we're going to do that on next video. This one's probably going to be kind of long, I don't know, and i got to edit it, edit this one before I'm able to go ahead and make the next video, because I probably won't have enough storage. So, like, subscribe, share, and thanks for watching.